All right, today I'm working on a 2006 Mazda 3 2.0. Um, basically, customer complaint, the check engine light's on, a little bit poor performance on the car, and um, uh, it's going to be using more gas in that department. Um, the code is going to be P2177. That's going to be basically intake bank, or uh, bank one intake, uh, let me get the code. So system two lean off idle bank one. Um, again, that the code is P2177. Now for this, basically there's a, kind of like two little things that you can check out. Um, the first one you can actually check out is the intake manifold control runner. Um, and then there's the intake manifold churning valve. Um, so there's gonna be two things on this intake. So you would need to test out both of those. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video and the procedure to that. We're gonna be testing out vacuum and solenoids. Um, now, if those are both good, you need to make sure that you're getting power from the signal wire. That would be from the computer and um, go over that. I already tested it. I already know what the issue is. I'm just gonna kind of do a video on this. So if anybody ever come across this procedure um, or this, this code that you can actually take these steps to um, solve this issue. Now, just remember putting in new parts Sometimes you need to test out the part before putting them in because they can be bad. Um, so you don't want to waste your time on that. So I just want to state that. So test out the part before installing so that you know it's working, especially on solenoids. I've gotten a few where that they are actually still bad. Um, if you haven't already, comment down below for any questions on regards to this. Like and then hit the subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future. And then we'll go ahead and start this video after the intro. Kind of looking into my scan tool, um, I'm basically in the output section. For the, I'm using the viewers for this part, so I'm going to be in output controls. Or let me just go all the way back. So we're going to be going under functional test, and then we're going to go under output controls, and then we're going to go down, and then until we hit intake manifold runner control and the intake manifold turning valve. Now basically what you can do is you can see how these will actuate um, on the car itself. Basically you would have an on and off button and you can actually cycle those. Now if you have the car off you have like a few PSI. I mean it will have some vacuum unless if you have a vacuum leak in the hose. So if you do, it should hold its vacuum, and then once you actuate it, it should um, suck up the, it should control the actuator. So, or, and then also you, to make sure that the solenoid is working, you can actually hit the on button, and you can actually make, hear it tick. So if you're hearing it's um, making a ticking sound, then you know it's good to go. Um, so we're going to go ahead and check out this. All right, so first thing what we're gonna go ahead and check, we're gonna go ahead and check the intake manifold con runner control. Um, if you don't have the scan tool, um, this is just one step that you're gonna have to skip. Um, I will show you how to test it without this procedure. Now, this one for the intake manifold runner control, that would be this black solenoid right here. And then the other ones for the valve, um, for the little flap control. So the brown connectors for the flap and then the the upper ones for the control valve um, so we're gonna go ahead and press the on button but we're gonna want to hear that click and then right here if you can get it right there so looking from right here so between the there would actually be a cover right here you'd pull that cover right out and then where this connector is at, these hoses right here, these are going to be for your your um, solenoids. So basically, right there, there's going to be a little valve. So I'll go ahead and point that. So this valve right here, we're going to go ahead and add, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and then you should see it move. So you see how that moved? That's me putting on the on position, and then that's off. Now if I cycle that a couple times, basically that would be getting rid of any little vacuum that's kind of in the, that little system. So just 
just remember it's going to be one or two two times um, now if you have the car running that's a different story you can actually cycle that back on and off now if you didn't have this feature with the scan tool what you can do is um, for both of the solenoid wires you can unplug this guy and then um, do the same thing as add a power and a ground and you can use it with these um, cables I will go ahead and show that it's just not right now I'm just kind of showing the testing procedure and so now we're gonna go into the next one so we're gonna go to the intake manifold tuning valve and now the tuning valve is actually right there so it's actually gonna be this guy right here but you see this little plunger right here that's the one we need to pay attention to so we're gonna go ahead and hit the on button so I just hit the on button and nothing happened turned it off turned it on so as you can see I have it on the on position and it hasn't moved so now we have an indication um, when you're turning it on and off you want to hear like a clicking sound um, I'm not hearing that so I'm gonna go ahead and show you for the other runner valve what you should be hearing so I don't know if you heard that little ticking sound so that that ticking sound that's what you should be hearing on both solenoids so I'm not hearing that so now I, I have an indication I have either an issue with the electrical so if I'm either not getting too much power I might have a voltage drop or it's the solenoid itself which in this case that would be the issue um, so we'll go ahead and, and check that right out and we'll go ahead and um, we can apply vacuum first so we're gonna go ahead and check this um, so there's gonna be obviously four hoses in total so you need to see which one is actually going to the um, the intake and then which one's going to the solenoid. So the ones that are going to the solenoid will be the second one. So for the top solenoid, um, the hoses in the back, not the front, there's two hoses as you can see. This one are going to be going to the runner control valves and then this one is going to be your, your vacuum leaks. I mean your, your vacuum from the intake manifold. So as you can see. Um, you chase these two wires right here and they'll go to right there so or not two wires two hoses so these two right here in the front they would go right here and then that's how you would um, actuate your vacuum so we're gonna go ahead and check vacuum on um, the second ones now when you're pulling these off you need to be careful that you don't pull up you need to twist these out so pop these out of their their little positions right here by pulling these guys back just kind of pull these just like that and then they're out of their spot so you can actually get more room and then get some pliers and then just twist them back and forth like spinning them back and forth just like that until they break free from the the valve and then you can go ahead and pull up because if you're pulling it up while it's stuck you'll go ahead and break the valve and if that wasn't the issue now that's going to cost you more money now I already have this one off um, well I already broke it free so it was more easier to take off so we're gonna go ahead and pull off this guy and then we're gonna go ahead and add a vacuum. Now, in order to add a vacuum, you need a, um, a vacuum gauge. You can actually buy one of these at Harbor Freight. I believe you can actually rent them from AutoZone. Um, I'm not too sure on that. So at Harbor Freight, I believe they're 30 bucks, $40. And then you can just either buy and return it. Um, so if you wanna just do it for that step. So we're gonna go ahead and connect vacuum or connect our our vacuum pump right there and then so once we got that connected this is how it's pretty much gonna look like and then we'll go ahead and press this so now remember we're gonna go ahead and watch that little solenoid um, work because we want to make sure that there's no um, leaks in the hose so you see it's actuating and I'm gonna go ahead and release the pressure and then I released it so we know that plunger is working perfectly fine and then um, now you can add a vacuum so basically we'll go ahead and just pump it and then we'll make sure you can do it at like what was it 
uh, about 7 PSI. I think that's the max that we can do. Get that to focus. So about 7 PSI is the max that we can do. And um, you basically you can just let it sit for about a minute or 30 seconds and then see if it, it drops its vacuum. Um, if you're not getting any vacuum at all, you need to go ahead and replace this hose. Um, the best way to replace this hose is by taking off this whole intake part and then I'm bolting these eight millimeters. And then um, you don't need to take off this guy out the way. You should be able to easily access the... So basically we're not losing any vacuum. So we'll go ahead and release that. And we know that's working. Um, basically you would do the same step for this on the other solenoid as well. So if everything's checking out, then you wanna go ahead and check that out too as well. So we'll go ahead and plug this guy right, well, we'll just leave that, but basically you would plug that guy right back in. And our issue would be, um, not, would be most likely the solenoid. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and unplug this connector. So you would just, just press this guy kind of push down and then pull right back up. Let's see if I can get this. So just like that, now we have more access. So now I have the I have the ignition on the off position. I don't have the keys inside, so make sure that you have the key on the off position before unplugging these guys. So what we're going to go ahead and do next is that we're going to go ahead and bench test this. So I got two wires, um, obviously one's going to be a power and one's going to be a ground. Now it doesn't matter which way you connect it, um, you're just going to, it's a solenoid so you can't you can't mess this up. So we're going to do one ground and one positive. Um, so we're going to go ahead and connect these first on the solenoid and then we'll go ahead and um, go to our battery. I know we see the cauliflower but uh, that's not the customer complaint right now that she wants to take care of. So we'll go ahead and um, plug those in right now. So just like that, that's how it's going to look like. Let me get that out the way. So you can see one's on, both of them are on the clips. Now make sure none of those are touching. Because if you do, you'll, you'll burn it out. So then we'll go ahead and connect our, our ground first. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and just tap it with our, just tap the positive. So we're not hearing any clicks. So nothing is moving over. And then when you tap this, normally you should hear a spark. So now we know this is 100% at fault. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the solenoid and get on with our way. I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, I got a kit that came with both solenoids, so basically we'll go ahead and test this one out so you can see of what I mean. Alright, so and then you're going to see it arc a little bit. So you hear that little clicking sound? So that's working perfectly fine. Um, so obviously we're gonna go ahead and switch these out. I'm gonna go ahead and switch both of them out. Now, before we take these out, obviously mark them with the white out. I will, I will record that process. And yeah, I mean, I think that should be it. Now we're going to go ahead and twist these hoses with uh, some pliers. So we're going to just kind of spin them around freely and then so they're able to break out. Now you can mark these front two ones, but I mean obviously the, the length is going to be a dead giveaway. These ones will actually go right here. So and obviously the other ones, the links too, they're going to kind of be a dead giveaway. Don't forget to unplug this guy too as well. So we'll unplug that and then right here for these there's going to be four um they're t25s so there's gonna be one right there and the other one's right there 
and then obviously the other two are going to be on the other side so there's one and then there's the other. So we're going to go ahead and change one at a time so that we don't get these mixed up. So we're going to go ahead and change out the brown one first. And there's going to be a 10 millimeter on the bottom. So we're now pretty much ready for the install. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention. So as you're taking... Um, the lines out or you want to remove this um, make sure that you have the hoses off this so it makes it easier to pull out um, and then pretty much if you did break one of these all you have to do is um, get some pliers and then have the hose facing like the whole opening have it facing downwards and not up because you don't want it to be getting sucked in and um, just crumble it and then get like a little pick so you can dig it out I'll go ahead and show that part the way how I'm gonna kind of do it so we want it facing down like this and then we're just gonna go ahead and squeeze it so they break and put back on our engine cover Oops. for the rest of the video um, you're just gonna kind of repeat the same testing procedure I know it's working so there's no need for me to test it out because obviously we found out the fault um, now if this video helped you out, comment down below, give it a thumbs up, like and share it, and then hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future, and thanks for watching.